Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. We're on to bag C of the Grand Hauler this week, which, judging by the drive shafts and the differential parts, we're going to be working on the rear suspension and the axles. So, off we go then, part 13. Metal bits first, we need the two leaf springs, four 14mm step screws, 13 13 M3 nylock nuts, four U-bolts, two of these long-shouldered bushings, two metal plates for the U-bolts, and four leaf spring mounts for the axles. And we only need a couple of bits of plastic. We need an F2 and an F8 for each side, which just leaves the 100mm screw to attach it all to the chassis, but we'll dig that out when we need it. OK, we've got two assemblies to make, one for the left and one for the right. Grab a spring and pop one of the thinner plastic bits, F8, on the inside of the curve with the rivet in the little hole. On the other side we fit F2. Now for the U-bolts, they slide over the grooves on the side of the plastic. Next we pop one of the plates over the threaded end of the U-bolts and fit the four nylock nuts. And just like the mounts on the front axle, we need to tighten them up a bit at a time so the plate sits evenly on the plastic. On the ends of the leaf springs we need to fit the axle mounts. All we do is line them up and pop in one of the set screws, then fit a nylock on the back. We can do them up all the way as the step on the screw gives us all the clearance we need to have everything move nice and freely. Fit one at each end and we've got a nice rear spring assembly ready to fit. But we do of course need to make two. The assemblies are identical, just make sure the step screws get mounted from the same side on each end. Next we need to fit them to the chassis, one on each side with the step screw heads on the outside. This is where we need that long 100mm screw and the bushings. Pop a bush on the screw shoulder first and insert through the hole in the spring assembly. Run it through the remaining hole on the suspension mounting plate on the chassis and all the way through to the other side. Pop the other bushing onto the other spring assembly, slide it over the end of the screw and fit a nylock nut. Do it up all the way, just like the step screws, the bushing set the clearance so it all moves freely. Like so. Very nice. Step 14. Differentials. These will be familiar to anyone who's built a few Tamiya kits. All metal bits for this one. 6 m 2 by 5s 4 9mm washers, but I'd be tempted to call them shims as they're ever so thin. 4 of the big bevel gears, 6 of the small ones, and 2 star shafts which just leaves the two sets of diff cases. For assembly, we'll need the little Allen key that comes with the kit, and the thread lock, and the grease. OK, take the big bevel gear and pop a few blobs of grease on the flat face. Drop one of the 9mm washers on and press it down a bit. Apply some more grease on the washer and drop it into the big half of the diff case. Next, we take the star shaft and one by one apply some grease to one of the shafts and pop on a small bevel gear. They don't need a huge amount of grease, just a little blob, and as you fit the gear, spin it on to make sure we get all the grease where it needs to be. The star shaft sits in three little cutouts in the diff case. Give it a good wiggle while it goes in to get the gears to find their position. Grease up another big bevel gear, add a washer, some more grease, and drop it in teeth down. It will need a little bit of fiddling to get it in, but it should sit nicely meshed with the small gears. Since these are all metal, we need to use a bit of thread lock so they don't fall apart. We really don't want to get any inside the diff, so careful application with a cocktail stick is the way to go. We need to get a good smear in each of the threaded holes. Install the other half of the diff case. It will need a good wiggle to get everything to sit. And it's probably about now the observant among you will notice I forgot something. Yes, I completely forgot to grease up the gears. I was so concentrating on showing the other steps, I missed it. Not a biggie though, we just need to open up the diff again and give three good squirts in the gaps between the small gears. Once it all gets spun up, it will get evenly distributed very quickly. Now we can put the case together again and install the three screws. Install all three until they're just starting to bottom out. Then tighten them the rest of the way a little bit at a time. They can go pretty tight, but watch out as the cast metal can only take so much before the thread strip. Well, there's one diff, we just need to build the other one this time remembering to grease the gears. And there we go then, ready to fit. Step 15, starting the axles. OK, we need 11 large eclips, 4 1150 ball bearings, 
10 11.50 bushings, which we'll actually replace with some more ball bearings, along with three bevel gear shafts and the drive shafts. For the plastics, there's an A3 and two A1s that make up most of the axle cases. You will be needing both diffs and two sets of drive shafts. Both assemblies are the same though, so we'll build one here and edit the other one in after. Okay, grab the axle shaft and slide on two bearings. Next, pop an E-clip in the grooves at each end with some pliers. Slide the bearings out to meet the E-clips and we've got an axle ready to fit. Repeat with the other one. We want one with a pin on the end and one with a hole. Grab the shaft with the pin and apply some grease over the pin and a little bit on the splines. Carefully insert it into the flat side of the differential, making sure it gets aligned with the bevel gears. Grease up the splines on the other shaft and insert it into the other side, lining it up with the bevel gear and the pin. And there we go, one assembly ready to fit into the axle case. But of course, we need two. Bevel gear shafts now. All three are fitted the same way, so we'll do one and edit in the others. Grab one of the shafts and pop a bearing on. From the inside of the axle case, insert it into the hole in the centre. The bearings need to be fully seated. The easy way to do this is to use a cross wrench to press it home. Just be sure to press onto the flat end of the gear and not the teeth. If we were using the stock bushings, we need to grease up the shaft, but with the ball bearings, there's really not a whole lot of point. It would only add drag. From the outside, install another bearing, and just like the first, use a cross wrench to press it in, followed by an E-clip in the groove. Rinse and repeat twice more, and we've got three axle cases ready to go. Step 16, the centre axle. This time, we need eight M3x15s, eight M3 plane nuts, two drive cups, and two M3 grub screws, but we'll leave those in the pot for now so we don't end up losing them. Right, we'll start with one of the A1 case halves and drop in the axle and diff assembly. The bearings have little slots to sit in, so make sure they are in position. When they are, it should sit nice and square and spin freely. The diff bevel gears need some grease. A nice thin coat over all the teeth will do the job. There's no point in using any more, as it will just get flung off when everything gets spun up on the first run. The bearings don't need any grease, so that's all we need to do inside. Drop the other half of the axle case on, A3 for this one, and install the screw and nut in one of the holes through the axle. The nuts have a nice hex shaped hole to sit in, making it really easy. Now the axle's not going to fall apart, we can fit all the rest of the screws. This time we need to use some thread lock on them. We want to avoid getting any on the plastic as much as we can, so pop a screw in and carefully smear a little bit of thread lock on the exposed thread. Install the nut and do up the screw. Work your way around, not forgetting to take out the first one and thread lock it too. Nearly there, just the two drive cups. Grab a grub screw and pop it on the end of the allen key. Smear a little bit of thread lock on the threads and install it a turn or so into a drive cup. Slide the cup onto the shaft, lining up the grub screw with the flat. Do up the grub nice and tight. The cup and the grub are steel, so they'll take quite a bit of torque. And of course, this being the centre axle, we've got two drive cups. So, the other one needs a bit of thread lock too, then it gets installed just like the first one, lining up the grub with the flat on the shaft. And there's a centre axle ready to fit. Step 17, the rear axle. Not surprisingly, this one's pretty close to step 16. We need the same 8 M3 by 15s the 8 M3 plane nuts, and the drive cup and a grub screw. The only difference is we need an extra plastic part, A2, an axle case without the hole for the bevel shaft. OK, we're going to run through this one nice and quick. Drop the axle and the diff lining up the bearings as before. Grease up the diff gear. Fit the other half of the diff case. Install the screws and nuts with some thread lock. Smear a little thread lock on the grub screw. Install it in the drive cup and install that on the end of the drive shaft on the axle. And there we go, there's the two axles all ready to fit. Step 18, mounting the axles. There's quite a lot of metal bits for this one. Eight M3 by 20s, four 18 mm step screws, four 14 mm step screws, four M3 nylock nuts, four M3 flange nuts, the small drive shaft, and the lower metal mounts for the axle. For plastics, we've got the axle links, two F6s and two F7s. OK, we need to smear some thread lock in all the threaded holes in the axle mounts on the leaf springs. We don't need a lot, just make sure there's some stuck in the threads in all eight holes. 
Next we need one of the lower mounts and two of the 20mm screws. Check the diagram very carefully so the axles go on the right way up. If they end up upside down the axle will turn backwards. Sit the axle on the mount near the end and drop the two screws through. Do them up very loosely. On the other end of the axle sit another mount on the end and install two more screws. Nip them up nice and tight and tighten up the first two as well. The rear axle is the same, we've got the two mounts and the four screws to fit. The trickiest bit is getting the screws to line up with the holes as everything wants to move around. All the bits are a nice precision fit though, which does help a lot. Lower linkages next. These have a right way round, so check them against the diagram. We'll start by fitting them to the metal plates in the middle. We use the longer 18mm step screws from the outside through the linkage, through the metal plate, with a flange nut on the inside. Just do them up finger tight for now, as they're going to need some thread lock once we know everything fits OK. The other end of the linkages fit in the metal mounts on the axle with a 14mm step screw and a nylock nut. Just spin them on with your finger for now. Do the centre axle first, then pop in a short drive shaft as you roll the rear axle into position. Now in everything fits, we can tighten up all the nylock nuts using the little spanner. Just like the other ones we've done, the step on the screw gives us all the clearance we need so we can do up the nuts and not worry about causing anything to bind. For the flange nuts, we can smear a little bit of thread lock on the exposed threads, loosen the screw so we get some thread lock in the nuts, then re-tighten them, nice and tight. And there we go, the rear suspension is working, but it's not quite done. Step 19, fake dampers. Screws and bits first, we need four M3 by 15s, four 14 mm step screws, four M3 nylocks, and four damper collars. For the plastics, all we need are four F5s, the caps for the top of the fake dampers, and of course we need the fake dampers themselves. Grab one of the collars and pop it into the top of the damper. Insert a screw from the flush side and put a cap on from the other side. Then it just gets installed on the chassis. The plastic cap has a little post that keeps it in position, so we don't need to worry about the angles. Do up the screws just enough to hold it together, as we'll be thread locking it in just a minute. The other three are identical, fake damper, collar, screw and a cap. At the bottom of the fake dampers we need the step screws. They get inserted from the outside through the metal mount and through the plastic bottom of the dampers. To hold them in we need to use a nylock nut. As usual the step screws handle the clearance so we can do them right up. All that's left is to thread lock the top screws. The usual trick applies, a bit of thread lock on a cocktail stick smeared on the exposed threads. Loosen the screw a few turns, then tighten them up nice and tight. Thread lock all four and we've got ourselves a nice rear suspension setup. There's not much movement, but it's an on-road setup. There's not much articulation either. It should take the weight of a trailer though, which is the important thing. Well, that's it for bag C. Next time we will be doing bag D, the three-speed gearbox, which should be fun. There's a lot of bits to get wrong in there. So, thanks for watching. Like if you liked. Subscribe if you don't want to miss the next video. And if you really want to make sure, give that little bell icon a click. Bye, guys.